Hello, in uh, this video I want to go through the mathematical proof of the rotating magnetic field. So to begin we'll just recap on what a rotating magnetic field is. So if I have a three phase system, uh, if we supply three phase voltages, so phase one, phase two and phase three, and I apply them to uh, three stators, so phase one, phase two and phase three, um, we will get a magnetic field um, and the sum of which uh, will rotate in a in a circular manner. So to e explain that, let's assume we have a three phase system here and at this point in time, the red phase, there is no current flowing uh, through the windings of, of this phase, so the magnetic field is zero. Uh, on the uh, yellow, uh, phase, there is current flowing through the, the windings, so there will be um, a magnetic flux lines going in this direction. And similarly on the blue phase, there will be current flowing through the, the stators here, the windings on the stators here, and we'll get uh, flux lines going in, in this direction. And the resultant will be this vector sum of both of these, which is, I'm showing here in purple. Uh, if we went on in time, say to here, then there's no current flowing in the windings on the yellow phase, so there's no magnetic flux there. There is current still flowing in the, the blue windings, so we'll get magnetic flux lines going in this direction, and we will, at this point in time, there will be some current flowing in the windings on the red phase, so we'll get flux lines flowing in this direction, and the vector sum of both of these uh, will give me this purple vector here. So that will be the magnetic uh, flux. So we can see it has moved from there to here. And as we go on in time, it'll move around. So that is the basic principle of um, a rotating magnetic field. And I have gone into a little bit more descriptive detail of that in, in another video. In this one, though, I want to, to look at it mathematically. So, uh, first thing we're going to look at is the strength of the, the flux lines. So, if we look at the red phase here uh, over time, you know, at this point in here, there's no current flowing, so there's uh, no magnetic flux. As time goes by, the current is stronger in the windings across this phase, and you can see that the magnetic flux lines have grown, and they will continue to grow and then start going smaller again, and then they'll change direction. So we go, once we go into the negative half cycle, the magnetic flux lines go in a different um, in a different direction, and then the cycle starts again. Okay, so I can um, say that uh, the, the flux lines are equal to the, the flux. So for here, the red phase, that's BM. So whatever the maximum is, I'm showing on the graph here is one. Um, one Tesla. So the the flux at any point in time on this phase will be BM sine omega t, and it's going to be acting uh, in this plane because that's how it's it's wound. So it's acting in at zero degrees. For the yellow phase, well, the yellow phase is uh, 120 degrees out of out of phase with the red. So it's BM sine omega t plus uh, 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 radians. And those flux lines will always act in this direction, uh, which is at an angle of 120 degrees. So that's 120 degrees from here. So if I measure that around there, that's 120 degrees. And finally, on the blue phase, uh, the, the electrical um, phase, uh, is 240 degrees uh, out of phase with the with the red phase. Okay, so you can see it here. It, that's that's 240 degrees, and they're always going to act in this direction. Okay, so, and that's always going to be 240 degrees out from the red. So that's 240 degrees in this direction. 
Okay, so I'm saying the strength of the magnetic field will be this value and the direction in which it's acting will be at this angle. Okay, so the strength and where it's acting, the strength and where it's acting. Okay, so uh, we could uh, look at the resultant then. So if I uh, look at the, the red phase, for example, uh, it's always acting at, at, at zero degrees. So it's going to be BM sine omega D cosine zero. Uh, it doesn't have a vertical component because it's always acting in, in this direction. So its horizontal component is always, you know, its strength in, in this direction. If we look at the blue phase then, and the yellow phase, they can be broken down into horizontal and vertical components. So the horizontal um, component would be BM sine omega t plus 120 degrees, and it's acting at sine 2 pi over 3. So it'd be the sine of this angle. And the, uh, sorry, the horizontal component would be the cosine and the and the vertical will be will be the sign of, of of this angle and similarly for the blue okay so there will be a horizontal component and a vertical component to the blue uh, magnetic flux lines all right so to get, to get the resultant then we'd have to add them all up so we would add all the horizontal components so the horizontal component horizontal component and this horizontal component and that would give us the resulting horizontal component. And then we would add the vertical components. So this one, uh, this one, and this one. And that would give us the resulting vertical component. So that would look something like this. So I'm adding all the horizontal components to give me the resulting horizontal component of my resultant. And if I add all the vertical components, which are these guys here, that will give me this vertical component of the resultant. So the equation then to add all of them will be just putting a plus sign in between them. And similarly here, just add them all again and putting a, a plus sign between them. Okay, so the first thing I can say is um, sine zero is zero. So that part of the equation is gone. Okay, so that, that it no longer matters. The sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And the sine of 4 pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2. So this equation then reduces down to this. And on the horizontal components, cosine 0 is 1. So this just becomes BM sine omega t. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is minus a half. And cosine 4 pi over 3 is also minus a half. So if I look at this angle here, that has the form of uh, an A plus B. So this is the sign of A plus B. And from trigonometric identities, the sign of A plus B is equal to sine A plus cosine B plus cosine A sine B. So if I uh, break this part of the equation out, so sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And similarly here, sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And I'll do the same with the horizontal components. Sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And over here, sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And then we just evaluate the value. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is uh, minus a half and the sine of 2 pi over 3 is plus root 3 over 2 cosine 4 pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2 and the sine of 4 pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2 and for the horizontal components the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is minus a half and the sine of 2 pi over 3 is plus root 3 over 2 
and then cosine 4 pi over 3 is minus a half and the sine of 4 pi over 3 is minus root 3 over 2. Okay, so now we just multiply uh, everything out. So root 3 by minus a half is minus root 3 over 4 plus root 3 over 2 by root 3 over 2 is 3 over 4 minus root 3 over 2 by minus a half is plus root 3 over 4 and root 3 by root 3 over 2 uh, is plus root sorry plus 3 over 4. Similarly down below <coughs> minus a half by minus a half is plus a quarter and minus half by plus root 3 over 2 is minus root 3 over 4 minus half by minus half is plus a quarter and minus a half by minus root 3 over 2 is plus root 3 over 4. Okay, so uh, I have um, I have a minus here, a minus root 3 over 4 bm sine omega t and a plus root 3 over 4 sine omega t. So they can just uh, they can just go. So that's going to cancel out with that. That gives me plus three quarters bm cosine omega t and plus three quarters bm cosine omega t, which is 1.5 cosine omega t. And down here we have minus root three over four bm cosine omega t, omega t and plus three over four uh, omega uh, t. <clears throat> so they're going to go. So we're going to get sine omega t plus a quarter omega sine omega t plus a quarter sine omega t so that's going to be 1.5 times sine omega t so there we go 3 over 2 bm cosine omega t and 3 over 2 sine omega t so that is my vertical component and that's going to be my resulting horizontal component Okay, so I'm just going to replicate this uh, over here, and um, it looks a bit odd because normally the vertical component would have a sine value in it, and the horizontal component would have a cosine value on it. So I've drawn a, a sine wave here in red and a cosine wave in, I suppose that's orange, um, just to show the point. So if I take, um, say, the cosine, for example, so cosine omega t, so if this is omega t, so that value there is the same as the sine of omega t plus 90. So there's 90 degrees. Okay, so what I'm saying is cosine omega t is the same as sine of omega t plus 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. And if we look at uh, the sine value here, we can see that the sine of an angle, so say here, sine is equal to the cosine of that angle minus 90 degrees. So if I took that angle, subtracted 90 degrees, and got the cosine of it, I would get the same value. Okay, so sine of omega t is the same as cosine omega t minus pi over 2, and cosine omega t is the same as sine of omega t plus 3 over 2. So that's how it maps. And that looks a little bit, that looks a little bit better. So uh, let's, uh, let's plot that. So what I did was uh, I went into Excel and I, I picked a signal that had um, a frequency of one hertz, one hertz. And um, so omega is two pi f. And then I just went from a time from zero to uh, one second, hence the one hertz. And I got um, for the horizontal component, I got uh, 3 over 2 bm 
Oh, I said this was equal to one. I just said let this equal to one. And this is equal to one. I got the cosine of omega t minus pi over two. And for the y value, I got the sine of omega t minus pi over two. Okay, so <clears throat> um, the R component then, so this is uh, this is the resultant. Um, so if I just go back, that's this value here, which is just the square root of x squared. So this value here plus y squared. Uh, that worked out to be 1.5. Uh, 1. So um, if I want to get the angle then that these make uh, with each other, I got the inverse tan of y over x. So again, let me go back. So there's the y component. There's the x component. So the tan of this angle here, or the inverse tan of that. Uh, of those, give me that angle, theta. So that's what I put into uh, to the spreadsheet. And um, you can see we start here at, uh, at 90 degrees and it moves around, it moves around in that direction at, at the different times. So let me animate that for you there. So here's a time zero, it's at 90 degrees. If I push on, it goes, and don't forget, this is the resultant, right? At, at, at each point in time, this is the the horizontal components and the and the vertical components. That's what and that's what we get. So it's moving around the whole time. So that's uh, how a rotating a rotating magnetic field works mathematically. Thanks.